Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zenata Consulting. Uh, my name is Tyler Colt, and in this video, we're going to be walking through how to set up an automation that will automatically enable bank payments for your customers. So if you do find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. And if you have any feedback or questions, uh, please leave that in the comment section below as we do try to read and respond to each and every one of those uh, every week on our podcast, The CRM Zen Show. It's kind of a two-part implementation. There's going to be some stuff we need to do in Zoho Analytics, um, and then a scheduled function that we're going to add into Zoho CRM. The trick here really is, is that, um, you know, when you've set up a digital payment platform within Zoho Books, maybe if that digital platform supports ACH payment. So, you know, at Zenata, we use Stripe and that handles our credit cards. But we also have Plaid tied in for ACH payments. And the thing is, if one of your customers wants to pay you with ACH, you kind of want to let them, right? Because you're going to be paying a lot less in fees than you would if they were to pay with a credit card. Unfortunately, though, out of the box, even when you have something like Plaid integrated, each customer will actually be set to not allow them to pay with a bank. So you've got all this integration set up, but nobody can actually use it. So this is kind of an automation that we can use to, you know, set it and forget it in terms of, you know, we add this thing in and then every single day, each customer that is not able to pay with their bank, it'll actually kind of flip a switch, right? And let them pay that way. So interestingly here, even though the end result is in books, we're actually going to start over on the Zoho Analytics side. I've got our customer's data pulled up because this is the main thing that we're going to look at. And really the column that we care about is this bank account payment column, right? And we'll see that it's set for no for every single one of these customers, which would mean that if we send them an invoice and they click to pay now, they will not be able to pay with ACH. If you open up Zoho Analytics and this column isn't here yet for your customer data, you'll need to go to data sources into Zoho Finance and then into our edit setup. Um, and from there, we can add any additional fields that we need. Uh, so in this case, we need to make sure that we have that bank, uh, bank payment field. But if you needed anything else, right, a little kind of bonus tip here, uh, within this menu is where I can add all my fields. So then customer, we see I'm already syncing that, but maybe I wanted to add this work drive folder ID, right? I could just check that box, click save, and then on the next sync, it will pull in additional data. So with our customer data, the first thing that we're gonna do is actually set up a SQL table that will apply a filter for us that will show, you know, only a subset of data. So here I'm going to go to create. I'm going to go to a query table. Um, this code is actually going to be shared over at club.sonata.com in our code share. Um, but you know, it's it's not a lot of code as you'll see when I drop it in here. So here I've basically added a little SQL table that's saying, "Get me all of the books customer customer IDs." where bank account payment is not activated and they're an active customer. I'll call this customers no bank payment SQL. Go ahead and save that. And this is going to be a super simple data table, right? It's got one column, which is just the ID of those customers. Um, and so on this side, right, we'll see that it should basically line up with the number of active customers that I have on this side of the house. So here I have 51 active customers, if we look at our status there, and here I have the same. So we're looking good. Now, the next thing we're going to do, and this seems a little silly, uh, but it helps with the function that we're going to add on the book side, is we're actually going to make a pivot view out of this data. And our pivot view is going to be very simple. It's just going to be this one column. And now I'm going to call this our customers no bank payment pivot. I'll go ahead and save that. Um, so again, this is going to be a dimension value. We want to make sure we've got each single one. I put it in columns. Let's put it in rows. That would look a little better. Regenerate that. And that is now looking how we like it. Um, so it's an important thing to keep in mind with Zoho Analytics that it's not just a place to report. It's a place to manipulate data. And then you can use the Zoho Analytics API to actually reach over and interact with that data. And so now on this side of the house, we've got pretty much everything we need, right? In terms of the analytics data set, um, we're going to come back to this page because we're going to use this URL in just a moment to actually grab some of these numbers. 
But first I'll go over to books and we'll start on getting our scheduled function set up. So here underneath settings, we'll go into automation. We'll do this as a schedule. Now you might ask, why am I doing this as a schedule? Because you might think, well, why don't I just do this as a workflow when I create a customer uh, that could trigger a workflow and I could just check this box. And that would work fine if you're only using books. Um, what we found is that for a lot of people using Zoho, the majority of their books customers are actually created via a sync with Zoho CRM. And that sync doesn't trigger workflows. So we kind of have to get creative here and have it run on a regular basis rather than on a triggered basis. So now I'll go ahead and add a custom function. I'll call this automatic enable of bank payments. Oh, doesn't like white spaces. So let's do our underscores here. Go. This function runs daily to enable bank payment for active customers. Always a good habit to drop these descriptions in. Uh, then we'll go ahead and define which module it's going to run in. Technically doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. Um, we're not going to use anything from this kind of predefined set of fields, but we might as well just make it a, you know, customer level function. So now I can go ahead and grab, I'm looking down here from my reference table, my function, drop that in. Now there's a couple things I'll cover here. Uh, if you're not familiar with Deluge, uh, go ahead and check out on our channel, uh, Greg's three-part series on Deluge. It'll make a lot of this stuff make sense. Um, if you don't care about learning Deluge, that's all good too, right? I'll show you exactly what you need to edit in here to uh, make this work for you. So we'll see that this pretty simple function, the only things that you're going to need to touch are right here, right? Org ID, workspace ID, and view ID. And these are actually going to come from Zoho Analytics, right? So we're going to grab these IDs. So our workspace ID is going to be this number first big number at the URL of your pivot table. Grab that and just drop it right in. And then next I'm going to grab my view ID, which is the ID of this pivot table itself. And I'm going to drop that in here. And lastly, we're going to need to get our org ID, which is kind of hidden. Um, you go to organization settings up in the top right, and then into the URL here. And this, so this 7096 number is going to be my org ID. And then all this function is really going to do, it's going to reach over to Zoho Analytics and it's going to get all the data that's at that URL, right? So if you look here, you know, we've, we've actually pretty much recreated this URL with our ID and our, our workspace and view IDs. And then we're going to use that data. And for each of the IDs that come back, we're going to go ahead and update that record. Now I do have one little note here. You'll need to make a connection to Zoho Analytics. That's what this little Z Analytics is. I'll show you how to do that. So under connections, again, no coding required here, so we don't need to click off. Go to create connection. There's a couple different ways that you can do these. Um, you can try to find if there's a connection directly to that application, just makes life a little easier. Or you can use the more general kind of OAuth connector that's in here. Um, because analytics is already there, I'm just gonna use that, it's a little faster. I'm going to give it a name. And then in this case, all we technically need is this Zoho reports.data.all. If you had other functions that you wanted to have inside of Zoho books that were going to go and use the data in analytics separately, you could add more scopes. Uh, I'm just going to add that one. And there's going to do a pop-up. I'll click connect. The magic here. Um, I need to put in my demo account, email address. And now we are connected. Beautiful, no code required, right? So now these two apps can speak to each other, right? We've made the handshake and we called it Z Analytics. Um, so now we can go ahead and save this. Now that we have our custom function set up here, um, you know, I'm actually gonna move this over to a schedule. Let's grab our full text here, put this in the wrong place. Come over to our schedule. We'll create a schedule, drop our function in. Daily enablement of bank payments. We can decide when this should run. Something like this, I'd probably run every day, right? So any customer that's been created recently is going to um, be able to get their payments enabled. Again, this is something that you really would probably want to turn on for everybody. Um, not much of a reason that you would not want people to be able to pay with their bank. 
And so now you have this function set up in your system that will run daily and enable bank payments for your customers. So again, 30,000 foot view, things we'll need to do here. Make sure that in Zoho Analytics, you've turned on the sync for this bank account payment field. You'll then wanna create a quick SQL table to filter out all that data. Create a pivot from there to make that data easily accessible via API. Copy paste the function from over at club.sonata.com and change out your IDs. Create that analytics connector and then you are good to go. And all of your customers will have bank payments enabled for them on a daily basis. Again, just meaning that hopefully you can pay a little bit less in credit card fees. Thanks again for watching this video. I really do hope that you found it useful. This is something that you might be able to plug into your Zoho account pretty easily. Um, if you did find it useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. It really helps us out and make sure that uh, our future videos will show up on your homepage. And of course, if you do have any comments, questions, or feedback, please leave those in the comment section down below as we do try to read and respond to each and every one of those on our weekly podcast, The CRM Zen Show. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.